Eddie, David, what have you come up with? Well, we came up with David Mitchell as an idea. Well, I didn't come. I wouldn't. I, I just didn't. thought, well, it's David Mitchell. Your, your team is called David Mitchell. This well, wasn't my idea. That I was thought my that idea. would. Yes, I thought I might seem self centered. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. we're called Nexus Six. <laughs> Maybe. Nexus 6. Nexus yeah. 6. Nexus if you know Blade Runner, Nexus 6, very cool. Yeah. It, they were very cool. They, uh, they were robots, <laughs> which is slightly different to us, yeah. but apart from that, they could kill or have very good sex. So I'm like, I'm like a robot that can kill or have sex. Yep. Yeah. I don't think you've even seen that film. I don't remember the Nexus 6 in that, frankly. Okay. Although, Jimmy, seeing as you are a robot, you could perhaps fill us in. Jimmy, I think you look more human when you try and pretend you're a robot. <laughs> <laughs> the humanity comes out in those moments. Jackie Smith's husband spent taxpayers' money on porno movies. He tried to cover up what he'd been doing by putting a cushion over his lap. <laughs> Using taxpayers' money for porn, terrible. I'd be livid if I paid a bit more tax. <laughs> The credit crunch threw the future of the euro into doubt. In Spain, they were so racked with anxiety, many people could barely get off to sleep in the afternoon. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't be a quiz without questions, right? Eyes down, here's your first round. The naughty started with an audacious heist at the newly opened Millennium Dome. What were they trying to steal? It was properly like a James Bond-style heist. This is... We write this down now, isn't it? This the, is the, the quiz. The talking is over. <laughs> the exam has begun. <laughs> Someone audacious. Was audacious. No, there wasn't someone audacious. It was, it was an audacious heist. The heist was audacious. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Can a totally unaudacious person do an audacious heist? Oh, he's dropped so a magic bomb. This is so out of character for me. <laughs> 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 so that's the most embarrassing night in her life. She farted. <laughs> oh, big deal. Wait till you shit yourself. <laughs> Before we all join in, can I just check she's not a surprise guest about the company? Because <laughs> it might be. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Rebecca <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> Poor thing, though. It's all, we've all let one out, surprisingly, at, you know, inopportune moments. Okay? You wouldn't want it televised, would you? You wouldn't want it to go no. out, you know. I mean, I know, I know she maybe is someone who we think perhaps morally is questionable, but to actually, you know, Float an air biscuit live on TV. <laughs> that wasn't an air biscuit, that was a fucking log. <laughs> <laughs> I think the amazing thing about that is someone from the audience says, you know, would it be a Margaret? Go on. And, and the chap without the hat said, Are you talking to me? <laughs> no, I'm talking to the bloke with the hat on. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, with respect, I mean, if, if I was, if my naked cadaver was being cut open on live television, by someone wearing a hat. <laughs> the wearing a hat bit is the bit I would least object to. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that at all. I would prefer just not to be there. If he'd have dressed like, completely like those blokes in the painting, that would have been a fabulous programme, wouldn't it? <laughs> if he was a kind of a cavalier doing a post <laughs> Swashbuckling his way through the corpses. <laughs> <laughs> Of a smile to camera. You could swing in on a chandelier and cut it open. <laughs> Possibly a roundhead <laughs> cadaver. <laughs> have a whole room populated by corpses who don't <laughs> fight back, <laughs> like, but sort of caught in tavern poses. <laughs> and then in comes the autopsy <laughs> guy. <laughs> Chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> he died of cancer. <laughs> Heart disease. <laughs> Mysterious. <laughs> I'm out of here to the next corpse pub. <laughs> okay. I asked you uh, what was blamed on a military coup, a cheese addiction, or a Cuban heels accident. Did anyone get this? What, what, what did you put, David and Richard? Kim Jong Un's disappearance. But then he, he reappeared again. He, I mean, he didn't disappear, yeah. like, in a flash. Like... <laughs> we don't know how he disappeared, cos we weren't looking at him when he disappeared. <laughs> he was just generally around, lots of pictures of him, inspecting <laughs> troops, smiling. Then suddenly he wasn't. And then he was again. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Kevin, Sarah, did you know this? Can you see yeah. these answers on the screen? Oh, sorry, am I getting in the way? No, no, no. <laughs> just Can I'm... you see these answers? <laughs> 
think that's a fair point Kevin makes. So you make us write it down. Yeah. And then you refuse to read it out yourself. <laughs> Exam board in the country. Well, so, well, thanks very much for the exam papers. We're not going to mark them, but we will listen if you while just... you read them out. <laughs> so and initially you write it down, and then a couple of down. minutes later you tell me what you've written down. But why don't we just remember it and then tell you? I don't feel I need to write this down. It's in there, man. But then it wouldn't make any sense because you just go, yeah, no, I got that. <laughs> Once I ask one of you, the yeah, other two teams to go, yeah, we got that. Oh, right, so it's there for the like evidence. That's yeah. it, evidence. Oh, right. evidence. One thing that really annoys me is that you Ooh. can't erase it. You have to scribble over it and then rewrite over the erase thing that you can't erase. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. We've been asking on a, for an eraser on this show since, Thank the, you, since the noughties. Thank you, testicles. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a very special treat for you now. Dragon's Den was one of the biggest shows of the noughties. Please welcome its brightest star, Duncan Bannatyne. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ballantyne there, one of the the best dragon, clearly the best dragon. Absolutely, yes, thank you. <laughs> Does anyone want to pitch any ideas? Anyone got any ideas for the for the den? You know, when you're in your car, you know, you've got your airbag. We're yeah. putting makeup inside it. So if you do have a crash, <laughs> <laughs> when the police come or the ambulance, you do look a bit near the mark. Do you know what I mean? Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> An invention, you probably feel this, that you're from Clybank as well. I am, Kevin, yes. from the same area. And you're, you've got a Scottish accent. Maybe the thing that smokers can use. And they put it to their throat and it speaks. Maybe change into uh, <laughs> a voice a bit more like this. <laughs> so, a linguaphone slash tracheoptomy. You can just put an accent <laughs> in. Sure. That's good. <laughs> and they've ruined cigarettes. That's good from Connery to Roger Moore in one go. Amazing. <laughs> David, have you got any ideas that you'd like to pitch to the dragon? We've got him here, I we may as well. He doesn't like Dragon's Den. He think... doesn't like Dragon's no. Den? He said oh. it before. Yeah. No, I, I have said it, but I wasn't going to bring it up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think it shouldn't be allowed. I just prefer Inspector Morse. <laughs> Right. This is incidentally my favourite question in the Big Fat Quiz of the Noughties. It's a brilliant question, OK? Ooh. In the Noughties, there was a brief craze for singing novelty taxidermy with products such as Travis the Singing Trout, Lucky Tom Turkey and Rocky the Lobster. But what was the name of the biggest selling singing novelty taxidermy of the Noughties? <laughs> <laughs> I need the exact name. <laughs> what did you go for, Kevin? Billy Bass. Billy Bass. Great question. It was a good question, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a good question. Uh, and then you've got... <laughs> Billy Bill Bass. Bill Bass, because we think that Bass is actually what he was rather than his surname. <laughs> You're saying fish are less formal than we'd first thought. Th they are less formal, <laughs> yeah. OK, and you've gone for Richard and Noel? Billy Bass. And then you've written... At your mum's real name. <laughs> <laughs> to protect you. <laughs> Thank you. OK, well, I can tell you the answer uh, was uh, Big Mouth Billy Bass. So the fish does have a surname? <laughs> yes. Does the fish have a title? Is he Mr. Mr. William Bass? Sir. Actually, he was made a Sir. Fish. Sir William. Well, you're going to feel like an idiot because he's here. <laughs> and you'll feel like a fool. Uh... Is that yours from home? <laughs> Does he sing? Oh. Imagine that would be very entertaining for nearly a minute. <laughs> As the autocorrect text message of March becomes the he penis fart go cartography, here's what happens. <laughs> Midsummer Murders producer Brian Trumay was suspended after defending his all white casting policy. Brian Trumay said he wanted to represent rural England as accurately as possible. And what better way to do that than by acting like a massive racist? <laughs> Barack Obama produced his birth certificate to prove where he was born, although he forgot to bring a utility bill, so he still can't rent films from blockbusters. <laughs> Wayne Rooney was in trouble after swearing into a camera during a football match. Rooney was seen asking, fucking what? <laughs> to be fair to Rooney, he was just randomly shouting two of his five words. <laughs> it happened to be fucking and what? It could easily have been kick, wee wee or banana. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke, I like that. <laughs> Thumbs up. Uh, I like that one. Okay, on to the questions. 
For our first question, it's over to Welsh acting supremo Michael Sheen. Hello, Jimmy. Michael Sheen here. Uh, my brother, Charlie Sheen, had a fantastic year. Uh, in fact, he was winning. He won all year long. He discussed this in many interviews, but can you name one physical attribute that he claimed separated him from other mere mortals? OK. So the question is... What separates Charlie Sheen? You, now, I think the question was, no. can you name um, one attribute that separates Charlie Sheen from us mere mortals, right? Yes. So I could correctly answer no and get the point. <laughs> Well, well, you're applauding someone being very weaselly. <laughs> yes, you, yes, you could, but it's not in the spirit of this game. All right. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Well, fancy we'll be wrong. That. We'll, which means we'll both be wrong. Did you ever watch ER? I love ER, but it because it's so fast and the, the the energy of it is incredible. But a word of warning: never watch ER and then follow it with a, an episode of Casualty because you can't cope with that amount of slowdown. It's, <laughs> it's like taking crack and then an aspirin. <laughs> so disappointing. I think ER is incredibly... because it's about a hospital. It's about That's a correct. place where we will, most of us, die. If we're lucky, we'll die there, rather than in a fireball. <laughs> you know, I don't want to see it until that's happening to me, really. I don't want to see it for fun in a story about other people who are dying in a way that one day I might. Can I say, there used to be a, a, a joke in Birmingham. There used <laughs> to be a joke in Birmingham? Yeah. <laughs> You've done very well out of it, Frank. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I've reworked it in every form. <laughs> and it used to be, why has the Queen got so many children? Because, she, because she's got ER on her knickers. <laughs> right? And in Birmingham, that means ER. <laughs> if you're watching in Birmingham, that's for you. I think it's interesting that in Birmingham, people think that the way sex happens is you strip someone down to their knickers and then read the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's, no, she's offering ER. Yeah, but... But why that's... would the Queen be in her pants, anyway? Yeah. <laughs> Point, it's probably wouldn't... clear well, she's at that, Hang on. At that point, she would be somewhere in Birmingham yeah. with her pants fully exposed. <laughs> the fact that there's instructions on the pants at that stage is not the main thing that's going to tip whoever it is who was going to have a go over the edge. <laughs> Surely they would have started by saying, why is the Queen in this bar in just her pants? <laughs> and someone would get, oh, no, oh, no, let's not do anything. Let's wait to see if there's a message. All right. It could be in she the could field. Be, she could be in a hotel in Birmingham. There could well, be. Well, how would they've got in? An intruder. <laughs> what an, an intru intruder who then will read the instructions on the pants, Frank. <laughs> Actually, I'm sorry, it's not just reading the instructions; it's reading them out loud and working out what they phonetically mean. <laughs> So, in Birmingham, presumably, as everywhere else, ER is on every post box and every policeman's... <laughs> every policeman's <laughs> head. <laughs> is this a city where policemen are being repeatedly fucked in the skull <laughs> by well-meaning strangers? <laughs> because it's in certain fact. bars on Fridays... Surely... No, it's, no, it's not. Apparently, it's they just save it for the Queen. 